lady, lady boy girlfriend a hand on the beach and a smoke of marijuana. And I know police give you trouble. This fact that we are not in this business mainly for the money. I can't breathe, I can't breathe, but it's still breathing. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> We just opened the uh, four months right now, three four months. Yeah, three four months. The uh, business business is just uh, legal. The couple the couple months the business is is, is good because people are exciting. People is super exciting. Oh, many one, many one. Right now people are just uh, getting tired. People are just getting tired of the many one. Oh, it's no more. Just many one. It's not a crazy like that. But the business is just like sometimes good, sometimes bad. It's all right. Don't worry about the business. You just need to follow the people, don't follow the money. You meet the good people, you all got a good business. Don't follow the money. I got a motorcycle, every day I got a half kilo on my package. Every day I have my half, half kilo. I have a check, have a police have a checkup one. And then they say, where do you gotta go? I said, go home. What do you have? Open. I open and show him. This is marijuana. All right, let's go. Go ahead, go ahead. Damn, motherfucker, this is fucking crazy shit. Before, before the, if them motherfuckers say like that, they will charge me a lot of money. Right now, it's wow, so nice. Right now, it's wonderful. But the mind shop, most uh, fifty percent of customers come from uh, Italy. It's Italy customer. Italy. Yeah, they really love smoke marijuana. I love that. Have a one correction is uh, everyone, every the marijuana. The uh, if you selling marijuana, you gotta shop. You everyone you will come to ask you. Damn! Oh my god! 700, 800 for one gram! Oh Jesus Christ, it's too expensive! Oh, oh, oh! Do you know Canada is how much for one gram? Do you know California how much for one gram? That is too expensive! Damn, I'm tired for the correction, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I also know cocaine in Colombia, in South America, only $2 for one gram! Come on, you don't even tell me that shit! Everybody know, you know what I'm saying? I just wanna say, you know, you pay, it's not just pay for the marijuana, you pay for the freedom right now. It's just pay for the police, don't give you any trouble. You don't pay for the freedom, you pay for the respect. Yeah, right now the price is a little bit high. I can't understand, but uh, we just legal to three months, four months, what do you want? What do you want? Give away one year, two years, next time when you come back, the price will be good. And uh, come on, I mean, it's a, it's a holiday, man. It's a holiday, come to a holiday with you, with you. You know what I'm saying? You enjoy your holiday and you come just buy one cup of ground and you smoke weed. Police never come to give you trouble. You can shake your lady boy in the hand, lady boy girlfriend in the hand on the beach and smoke a marijuana. Woohoo! And no police give you trouble. It's really good thing, you know, this freedom land. I love Thailand. Thailand is pretty freedom. I love Thailand. Thailand is a nice country. Viva Thailand. Thank <laughs> you. 
Damn man, like it's a really long story for us. We kind of like an underground people before. Um, he doing grower, I'm I'm doing selling, so it's kind of like illegal. But when the law is start, so like everything has changed. So underground people they have to like change like everything, how to manage the business, how to grow and how to sell. Everything you have to change because of the the law. When it's illegal and when it's underground, the price is kind of a little bit higher than this. But everything is easier now today. You can like go visit other shop. You can go see the good weed. You can see the bad weed now today. But in the past, it's just the weed. You buy and then like what the dealer give to you is just whatever it is. Now it have more choice. It's good for the customer and it's good for the a good dealer and boost potentially that. Um, they find the good stuff and selling in the fair price. And some of the the new new players, they doesn't know about the the weed business. They might do this something wrong. Not kind of easy because like when it's legal, you have to try get open the shop by your own, right? Because of your underground customer will gone because I they have a shop around them that they can go by easier like, because in the past you, we do the delivery yeah and then like whatever you live in Bangkok like they just have like maybe less than 10 dealers so if you one of them so you you can stay for a long time man yeah but now you have to like advertise Google ad like put you on the map Facebook Instagram photo everything now I think like it's a little bit difficult now today the new guys that never tried weed before, oh, yeah. and like he got, he never know the tolerance, and like he smoked mm. too much, and like mm. green out, like from 5 p.m. until like in the middle of the night, uh, open too, like, too quickly. So the newcomer is like never mm. try, and like something like that. So right now the doctors, like most, uh, most of the doctors, mainly against the legalization of the cannabis because of. Those guys that never used it before, and like they never try, and they yeah. use too much at the first time, and like they go to the hospital at a three, three at the night, yeah. and like they just like I can't breathe, I can't breathe, but they're still breathing. Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> There's no way to like cure the green out yeah. effect, so like just sleep. <laughs> That's the the best advice about the growing part in Thailand. So back in the day, that not many producers with because of like. We have to grow it indoor, we, we have to cover the electric bill, so it's like pretty hard in Thailand because it's hot. So we have to keep the AC 24 hours. So yeah, yeah. the electric bill is like quite high, like the, the cost of the producing in producing the buds in Thailand is like quite a lot compared to like US or like compared to other countries that have the weather is like cold all the time. That's why some sometimes the price in Thailand may be higher compared to like other countries. Yeah, yeah. yeah so but like after legalized, so yeah, the newcomer and the uh, big money guys came into growing stuff as well. So like, yeah, we have to keep a look in the future. So who are gonna stay and keep the quality up? Because like right now, so too many bars in in Thailand has spreading in Thailand. So many qualities, many from many growers from many countries. Yeah. So we have to try, and then people that use. Maybe they're gonna know where to get it yeah. in the future, so we're gonna stay that way. I think this is the growing part in Thailand. Yeah. Yeah. You can see like the guy behind you over yeah. there. Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I sleep here. <laughs> <laughs> so now, like, um, yeah, we have a lot of funny things happening here, but it's kind of like a common thing for us. 
for the weird people that yeah like you come hanging around. Our store called the Top Wood because we try to bring our value of the wheat back to be the top again. Right now, our store like just opened up like uh, one month ago, and then so we're gonna come up with like the first like grand opening.
So we're gonna try to bring up the value of the wheat in Thailand by we're gonna serve the best wheat. Some of that is our home grow and some of that is the wheat that we collect as our own stuff. And some of that is also the import stuff. So we're gonna put the tasting like kit in front of you and we're gonna taste the wheat out of it so that you can know the quality of the wheat and also to serving you so we're gonna put the electronic vapor so that you can uh, get the proper temperature from that so you can get the best head out of it and then we also gonna give you like the certification stand by the top wood dispensary like to prove that this this wheat is qualified and as a souvenir for you guys like to show to your friends and like to keep it as a memory the world of wheat is peaceful, yeah. you know, yeah. like we not try to compete each other, but just yeah. try to serve the best wheat to the customer. Yeah. Whichever they want, like whichever type they want, indica, sativa or hybrid, we're going to try to bring the best value, like to serve to the customer, you know, like from abroad, from home go, like, you know, like any import, like stuff or any like the farming stuff that we harvest and do by ourselves, like from our farm, like because we have a big farm in the big mountain of Thailand. So it's called Nakhola Jasima. It's a different part of Thailand, mm -hmm. like nearby Bangkok, like something like that. So we go by ourselves. So we, but we also respect to the abroad wheat, you know, like the foreign wheat, like that we import from there. So we not try to compete it, but we just try to show that okay, all of that that we bring to the customer is all all the best quality. For for me, it doesn't change much, you know, like because actually Thailand before they start educational, they start medical before, mm -hmm. and many people they got the impact from those disease, you know, they try to find another option for them to treat themselves, something like that. For me, I'm just try to bring the value like from 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 the wheat, like to serve all yeah. of the people, you know, like try to advocate the community and try to support the community something like that. If they do like those kind of illegal stuff, I'm not going to sell it because our store right now, we focus just only like the flower, you know, we're not selling like those extraction, like if it like against the law, we not try to do it. So we try to support our community and bring it like up. Mostly a lot of the customer who came to our store is like mostly they are come from abroad, like mostly like 95% they come from abroad. And not too many Thai people, they come right over here. Some of them, like, they, they just like the small, like, some small dispensary, which they feel, like, comfortable, you know. Yeah. And we have the seat outside there that the people can sit and they can chilling out. Somehow, like, some of the fancy, like, you know, like, dispensary, sometimes it's, like, too much. And then they're having, like, a higher price compared to us. So that's why some people, when they come to Thailand, they just want to, like, feel free you know like to hanging around so sometimes like the people they come just only a week you you know they want to like have just have fun but with the reasonable price
we started the business because basically we're all potheads, so it's something that we're really passionate about because we really like to smoke cannabis as well. And we figure that you know cannabis is not just about smoking, but we feel like it, it brings a lot of things you know for us. Like we feel like there's a community that we really enjoy being in. Like I feel like it's a very peaceful, a very kind community that you know because personally back in the days i was very into drinking smoking partying and it was a hectic sort of lifestyle but now that i figured something that is much more peaceful to enjoy and it also helps me sleep so it's also good for me physically and mentally we had a little bit of trouble trying to find you know a nice place within the budget so because we've never run a business before, so we don't actually know, you know, like the scope of our budget and you know how much it's going to cost us approximately. Like, it's 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 been very difficult. So we've been around to Sukhumvit, we've been to Ari, Sapan Kwai, and then we ended up here because we thought that Kausan might be like you know like a hub for like tourists and stuff, but we just really didn't dig the vibe of you know the Kaosan area but we prefer much more peaceful location which is situated a little bit outside of Kaosan so yeah so uh, that was probably not the hardest to be honest but uh, it, it was a start but um, it, the difficulties was followed by finding the supplies because you know after after the nine the market has been bombarded so it was very very difficult to find supplies everyone was just you know trying to get the good stuff so we were having that first difficulty now i think that it's becoming more of a thing you know to support local growers because since it's been you know legal now in thailand i have a feeling that the only way that we can move the market forward is to support our local growers i don't think that you know importing stuff in would help us grow further than this so i think it's always better to you know support our own people and also we have a co-owner who also grows his own cannabis as well and uh because his background is that he is also a farmer you know his family grows uh fruits and vegetables down south of thailand and um i think that it's 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 been running through his family you know growing things like that so uh, he's been putting a lot of work, you know, trying to figure out how to properly grow cannabis, even though he's quite new, you know, into growing cannabis. But uh, his passion grew out from uh, his father was sick of cancer and um, his father couldn't sleep and he couldn't eat. So the only alternative they could find was cannabis. So I think that was that was pretty much when he started to, to find his interest in growing his own but I mean throughout throughout the business you know we we figured that okay it was it was not easy for us to find local growers because we are we're not very into that you know industry to start off with so it was it was it was more of a scarce sort of you know resource so now we're just trying to find out, you know, make more connections and meeting up more people, going to events so that we could see how people are growing, what they're doing. And it's such a beautiful community, I would say. They're all very open hearted, you know, they share with you how to grow stuff. They give you tips and tricks and stuff like that, which I find that some people are quite, you know, some people are like, we don't want to tell you anything. Yeah. But the thing is that most of the people that we met, they're 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 always sharing stuff with us, and we feel like, okay, why are we not supporting this kind of people? Why are we not supporting you know these local growers? They're doing the best they can, you know. To I wouldn't say they were trying to beat the you know the American buds or stuff like that, but I think that they're new in the game, and by not supporting them, we are already lowering the chance of them you know making through in in such in this industry. So I think that um, we there's a lot of stories, you know, like last time I think we, we bought our, our flowers from a farm as well. There's, there's like a GTG amber farm and stuff like that. They have like um, COA and, you know, they can provide us with like a, an analysis of, you know, the cannabis and stuff like that. And I think that, okay, that that is fine as well, but I just really prefer to support smaller people than that. People who grow in such a small, like a, 
less skill, you know. Because I, I think that it's hard to say, but I feel like there's much more heart put into what they're growing. And when you smoke it, you feel it, to be honest. Like sometimes people want uh, a very, very cheap cannabis, which is not within their budget, and we cannot offer them what we have. And they just suddenly came in and they're like, why are you not giving me weed? It's like God's will for me to buy weed. And I'm like, okay, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry for that. But I think that, um, I wouldn't say funny, but it's just uh, a phenomenon to me, you know, to see how many beginners we have here at the dispensary. Um, but I mean, it's a nice thing to see people wanting to try new things. So more of, you know, just selling things and just sitting here and just, you know, giving them weed. We are trying to uh, give them knowledge of how to properly smoke. And then we try to, you know, service them in terms of like, we always tell them that, you know, we don't want them to smoke on their own. So maybe stay here and smoke and we take care of you. And I think it's always a nice thing to give them a great experience after smoking because not everyone has that, you know, like even my first experience was pretty bad. And I think that that, that made me distant from, from this thing for quite a big while before opening up to it again. And I think that because um, cannabis in Thailand is pretty controversial, I would say. A lot of people are like against it. A lot of people like it. Uh, we cannot change everyone's mind. But I think we're doing the best we can, you know, in terms of like being very, you know, friendly. We're always servicing our customers. And I think I just want them to realize that it's a very it's a very beautiful community. We are a pretty kind community. We are peaceful, of course. And you know what what we're trying to do is help people. We do have people coming in and they say that they they're suicidal, they have like sleeping problems, they have mental issues, and they're always seeking for something to help them ease their pain. But even if we're not like a medical institution, we can tell from our own personal experience that it, it does help you a lot. Because like personally, I have sleeping problems myself, and I think that it has been helping me like a lot, I would say a lot. Like I suffered a lot because I couldn't function throughout the day because I couldn't sleep during the night. And of course, I have to work, I have to study, I have to go out, I have to, you know, and there, there's a community for me to, to always participate in. So I think that that, that was a, a, a life-changing investment I did, choosing this as an alternative to, you know, Xanax or Valium or stuff like that. So, so I just wanted to emphasize the fact that we are not in this business mainly for the money you know i mean i wouldn't blame other people who's doing that for you know if if that's their purpose but we're in here because we're passionate about what we do because if not we wouldn't be here every day like it's you know you see a lot of people opening a business and they ask other people to run their business for them but we are here running our own business daily when we have you know a sufficient financial status to actually hire other people to do it for us but uh, we just enjoy talking to people, meeting new people. And I think that um, it, it opens up our perspective quite a lot, you know, to see people from all around the world, you know, coming here for cannabis. But it's, it's not just, you know, to get high. I just, I just always ask them, you know, what's the purpose of your, you know, getting your cannabis? Everyone's like, okay, I just need to go to party. I need it to work. I need it for creativity. I just need it for sleep. So it's sometimes we have like a very interesting, you know, I would say view of people viewing cannabis. Some some people are like, I don't like smoking, but then they're like, uh, it's the only thing that gets him through the day. Some people are, uh, I think we had like another customer. He was like addict, like he he was an alcoholic, so he was using cannabis to you know help him reduce that craving that he had because uh, of course alcoholism is quite difficult to get to get to, to get away from. So. Uh, he comes here every now and then, you know, he's always talking to us and he, he's always happy. I think when he first came in, he didn't really look as lively, but then he's like, he feels a lot better now walking into the dispensary. So, yeah. And um, I think that it's just important for us to do our job right, I think, because it's a very, it's a very sensitive matter, I would say. Not everyone is going to agree with what we do or understand what we do. 
but um, as I say, I think we're we're trying our best to do what we can to help shift what people are viewing, you know, how people are viewing us or viewing this uh, kind of uh, billion dollar industry. Um, and I think that the world is changing now and, uh, you know, people should understand that also, the most importantly, cannabis is not like a magical drug. I would never say that. But of course, it helps people in different ways. Like it could help me sleep, but some people use it and they can't sleep. So, you know, it's a very it's a very personal and a very subjective thing. So Never Not High is here to, you know, give them the consultation and, you know, talk them through the problem. We're, we're more like we're more like therapists here. We're like always talking to people and, you know, giving them advice and talking to them, making their, ba their day better. And I think that it's it's just a beautiful thing. So I think cannabis is the way to go. Spread the word, spread the love.